We are asked to evaluate the integral, and this will turn out to require the method of trigonometric substitution. There are a couple of clues that indicate to us that we should be using this method. The first clue is that you have a square root in your integral. But then in addition to that, you have a variable squared minus a constant. And very often the constant that will be given to you in the problem is a perfect square. So numbers like one or nine or 16, or in this case 49. And what I like to do is I like to take my perfect square and I like to rewrite it as seven squared in this case. And then I refer to a handy table of trigonometric substitutions. You have three expressions and you wanna to try to match which of the three matches the one in your problem. So here's the one in our problem. And again, it's a variable squared minus a constant squared. If you look very carefully, we have a variable squared minus a constant squared right here in this expression. Notice also that our constant in this particular case is seven. So we could write that A is equal to seven. And so once you identify which of the three expressions is applicable, the very first thing or the very next thing you wanna do is this substitution. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to let x equal our a, which we said was seven, times the secant of theta. The next thing you will do is differentiate that expression with respect to theta. So you would have dx equals seven times whatever the derivative of secant of theta is. Most of us know that the derivative of secant of theta is secant theta tan theta. And then we would have d theta right here. So now what we need to do is to take our original problem and make a series of strategic substitutions. So this would be your third step. And what we'll notice is that since x was equal to seven secant of theta, if you were to square both sides of that, you would get x squared equals, you'd have to square the seven on the other side to make 49, and you'd square the secant to make secant squared of theta. But by the same token, we're going to need to cube that original substitution. So let's go through and do it again. We're gonna cube both sides of this expression here. So we would have x cubed, and then seven cubed is 343, and then we would have secant cubed of theta. Now we chose to do x squared and x cubed because if you look at the original expression, that's what you have. So we'll now go ahead and make our strategic substitutions. Our x squared is going to be 49 secant squared of theta minus seven squared, which we can rewrite back to 49, all divided by x cubed, which is 343 secant cubed of theta times dx. Now don't forget that dx was derived as seven secant of theta tangent of theta d theta. So that's your expression. And believe it or not, once we simplify it, we will achieve a simpler integral. So that's what we're gonna do next is to try to simplify it. Let's go underneath the square root. Let's notice that we have a common factor of 49 under there. So we're going to factor out a 49. That will leave us with secant squared of theta minus one all over that same denominator, and then multiplied by this quantity over here. Now take a look underneath the square root, particularly inside of the parentheses, and you have secant squared minus one. Well, we go back to this handy table and we can see that secant squared of theta minus one is equal to tangent squared. So we're going to rewrite this expression, but we're going to substitute tangent squared for this quantity in the parentheses. And now the simplifying continues. Look over here, we have the square root of a perfect square. So you're going to have the square root of 49, which is seven, and then the square root of tangent squared is just tangent because the square root and the squaring cancel each other out essentially. And then you have all this times seven secant theta, tan theta, d theta, and this is over 343 secant cubed of theta. So now we can begin to clean things up here. Let's deal with the constants. We have seven times seven, which of course is 49. So then you have 49 over 343. And if you reduce that, you get one seventh. So together, we can actually reduce all that to a one seventh and factor it out like so. Then we can cancel out a factor of sec theta. So we'll cancel this sec theta. We have three of them in the denominator. So we'll cancel one of them to make just secant squared. 
and that again is in the denominator. And then up in the numerator, we have tangent squared of theta, d theta. So it's already starting to look a little simpler. Let's see if we can continue to simplify. We kind of have this tan squared over sec squared. Let's recall that tangent of theta is sine of theta over cosine theta. And furthermore, secant of theta is one over cosine of theta. So we're actually gonna use those to our advantage. Let's go ahead and rewrite tan squared as sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. And then we were dividing that by the secant squared, but remember secant is this quantity here. So you're actually dividing that by one over cosine squared of theta. Notice it's squared because the secant was squared. And in fact, this factor of cos squared in the denominator and this factor of cos squared in that denominator will actually cancel each other out. So we are left with indeed a simpler expression. It's the integral of sine squared of theta d theta. But then in order to integrate sine squared, we're gonna to have to rely on another trigonometric identity. Now, this was presented in an earlier section of this textbook, but in that section they taught us or reminded us that sine squared is one half times one minus cosine of two theta d theta. So that's the identity we're gonna to have to use why don't we go ahead and factor out this one half to the outside. We'll multiply the one seventh by the one half. You'll get one fourteenth integral of one minus cos of two theta d theta. Put the integral sign there. Okay, so now we're ready to integrate. Let's recall that the integral of the cosine of k theta, where k is a constant, is one over k times the sine of k theta. That's going to help us evaluate that integral right there. So here we go, we're integrating. We're going to integrate one with respect to theta, that's just theta. And then based on our integration rule on the side here, we're gonna have one over two sine of two theta, and then plus c. The last step we have to make sure is to rewrite theta in terms of our variable x. We can't circle this and call it a day because we've changed the variable to theta. So to rewrite theta in terms of x, we have to go all the way back to our original substitution, which is right here. x was seven secant of theta. So let's talk about that for a moment. x equals seven sec theta. You will divide both sides of this by seven. And what you're trying to do is isolate the trig expression. So sec theta is x over seven. Now, recall, in a right triangle, the secant is the ratio of the hypotenuse over the adjacent. It's basically the reciprocal of cosine. So what we'll do is we'll draw a right triangle. We'll just stick theta down here. We'll label the hypotenuse as x and the adjacent as seven. We're gonna to need to figure out the opposite side. Why don't we just call it b? And then we'll use Pythagorean theorem this is probably old news for most of us, but seven squared plus b squared, well, yeah, equals x squared. Why don't we just say 49 plus b squared equals x squared. Subtract 49 from both sides and you have x squared minus 49 over there. Square root both sides and you can see that b is the square root of x squared minus 49. So let's go back to our right triangle and label that side as the square root of x squared minus 49. Now. We're going to reference that right triangle and we're going to rewrite these thetas right here in terms of x. Though in fact, it's gonna be a little tricky still because we have the sine of two theta rather than the sine of theta. So we probably have to recall one more identity. This problem is definitely a doozy. But let's hopefully recall that the sine of two theta is who sine of theta, cos of theta. That's a pretty common identity. And neatly, half times two cancels out to just make a one. So we can actually eliminate those and we're left with just sine theta, cos theta, like so. Now we go back and we look at our right triangle. I suppose we should copy and paste it down below so we can view it alongside of our answer. 
and let's talk about theta. So we can we can get theta by recalling that the secant of theta was x over seven. And so let's write that down, secant theta was x over seven. If you take the inverse secant on both sides, you would get theta equals the inverse secant of x over seven. So this theta right there in our answer will be replaced with the inverse secant of x over seven minus, now sine of theta, look at this right triangle, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So you would have opposite over hypotenuse times the cosine of theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it would be times seven over x, like so. Don't forget your constant of integration, so plus c. That gives you a nice final answer. You probably want to multiply these to make x squared, just to clean that up a little bit. So we'll just kind of rewrite this all over x squared. You could probably move the seven in front of the square root as well. So in fact, let's just clean that up a little bit. You're gonna have seven square root x squared minus 49. We've done enough work. Why don't we leave that as our final answer?